experience of this program are not those of intellectual radio background and subsidiaries or sponsors. Encouraging, educating, and empowering you into action. This is Warriors Talk with your host, Lady Rochelle. Hello, hello. Welcome to Warriors Talk with author and founder Lady Rochelle, where we move away from awareness towards action. It is Relationship Monday, and our topic for today is how to identify a narcissist. We are live on Intellectual Radio. We just heard from the Drive at Five with Roman. Keep it locked right here on Intellectual Radio and allow us to feed your brain. On the last episode of Warriors Talk, I spoke with Sharon Anderson, and she told us a story about inflammatory breast cancer. Go over to YouTube, type in Intellectual Radio, and stay connected. The quote of the day is, some relationships are like broken glass. It's better to leave them alone than to hurt yourself trying to put them back together. We are grateful for our sponsor. We have Michael Richardson with the Emmanuel Church of God in Christ, who has a special message for us. Greetings, I am Pastor Michael Richardson. And I am First Lady Anastasia Richardson from the Emmanuel Church of God in Christ. We're located at 3058 West Van Buren in Chicago, Illinois. We are building upon a solid foundation. And we're inviting you to join us every Sunday morning on Facebook Live at Emmanuel Kojic at 1015 Central Standard Time. And you can also view our videos on our YouTube channel at Emmanuel Kojic MR. Once again, this is Pastor Michael Richardson and First Lady Anastasia Richardson. And we're from the Emmanuel, Emmanuel Church, Church of, of God, God in Christ. Christ. We are building upon a solid foundation. Here are your trending topics for today. Pioneering hip hop artist Keith Grayson, who performed as DJ K Slay and worked with top stars, has died of complications from COVID-19. Grayson's death at the age of 55 on Sunday was confirmed by his family in a statement released through New York radio station Hot 97 where he hosted the Drama Hour for more than two decades. A dominant figure in the hip hop culture, where millions of fans worldwide, DJ K Slay will be remembered for his passion and excellence with a legacy that would transcend generations. Um, That was the statement from the family. And Grayson actually grew up in Harlem, immersed in the New York City early hip hop scene. He got his start as a teenager as a graffiti artist and was featured in the 1983 hip hop documentary, Style Wars. He began selling bootleg mixtapes on the street corner in the early 90s and released his first studio album, The Street Sweeper, Volume One, in May of 2003. Grayson released several more albums and worked with the likes of Nas, Kendrick Lamar, Jadakiss, and Busta Rhymes. Hot 97 is shocked and saddened by the loss of our beloved DJ K Slay, the radio station said in a statement. Those are your trending topics for today. If you are joining in on any form of social media, please like, share the show, invite someone else in on the show that you feel may benefit from this valuable information. Um, We are going to be talking about how to identify a narcissist. Hey, Lisa, thank you for tuning in. How to identify a narcissist, y'all. This is a hot topic. As we know that narcissist, that term has really been circulating. I would say within the last, for me, when I heard it, the last 10 years. And so right now, when somebody do something that we don't like, we always say, oh, they are narcissists. You know, if it's anything that we feel like um, that doesn't hit our gut right, we're calling them a narcissist. So let's jump right into the topic and talk about exactly, first of all, what is a narcissist? So a narcissist is an individual showing symptoms of or affected narcissism, such as extreme self-centered, like a person who is all about themselves and who has an exaggerated um, sense of self-importance, right? And you may say, hmm, that, that sounds like anybody. That could be anybody that I know, right? But it actually gets a little more detailed than that. Um, my Leah said that Taylor Swift once says that I never trust a narcissist. <laughs> 
but they love me and laugh out loud. Oh, that is so funny. Uh, you know, and you have to think about that. Like, why, why do you attract a narcissist? Like, what is it about you that you keep attracting a narcissist? But um, it has nothing to do with you, nothing to do with your flaws. Most of the time when people attract narcissists, um, that person is a kind person. You know, they're kind hearted. They're forgiving. Um, it's, they're a sweet person. And the narcissists tend to draw on that like a like a um an insect sucking on blood, right? They they know that you are a sweet person. They know that you are forgiving. And so sometimes they use those people and they use your good nature against you. So um, three decades ago, um, the data from more than 475,000 participants, a new study on narcissism from the University of Buffalo School of Management revealed that men on average um, there we have more men narcissists than we do women, right? So we know that it exists in both um, genders, but um, they tend to, um, I don't want to say diagnose, but we have more men than women that are um, the narcissists. And when it comes to diagnosing, narcissists don't like to be diagnosed. Why? Because if they're going somewhere to get help and somebody is diagnosing them, then that means that they have a problem. And narcissists do not want anyone to think that they have a problem because narcissists tend to think that they're perfect. So let's talk about four different types of narcissists, right? Um, different types of narcissists. Um, you may um, know the first type, which is the grandiose type. And this particular type of narcissist is the classic narcissist. It's like your classic 57 Chevy, right? And most of the time when you hear someone say, you know, they act like a narcissist, it's probably going to be this type of narcissist, right? It's going to be the, the grandiose narcissist because it is the classic um, arrogant, attention-seeking narcissist that um, they're entitled, preoccupied with their own success. And um, sometimes they're even jealous and envious of other people, right? The nerve of them. And they'll say stuff like, I'm, I'm better than you and I know it. Like when people say something like that, you know, like what is wrong with this person? You know, like they have, they have, like what people say, they have the balls, right? They have the balls to say these type of things. And you will look at them and be like, wow, like, I can't believe you just said that out of your mouth, but they will, they will say it to you and will not feel bad. Um, Brenda says, so right. So I'm sure we all have encountered a narcissist and we probably just didn't know what um, that person was and why they was behaving the way that they were. I didn't know it until I was actually out of the relationship and I thought that it was something wrong with me. Like, you know, what, what is wrong with me? You know, why, why did this relationship didn't last? And when I started thinking back on all of the things that was happening, I just, I came to conclusion that this person was a narcissist and, and then kind of like, you know, sucked me in. Remember we talked about on a show, I did a show about um, love bombing. The narcissist will love bomb you and you think you have found the perfect match, right? And this person will do everything that you are, because you done told them what to do. So they done did everything that you told them to do. They're catering to all of your needs. And you're like, oh my God, you're like, this person is the one for me. And so once they love bomb you, right? <laughs> They'll love bomb you. And then once you're hooked, they, they hooked you with the love bombing. And then they don't want to do that anymore. It's all about them now. They, they want you to cater to them. Um, Eminem says, yes, yeah, so many people do not see the signs. And that's so true. And I think we don't because we want to see the good in people. We really want to see the good in people. We don't want to believe that, you know, somebody is it's all about themselves. So when it comes to narcissists, um, uh, I've done shows on um, trauma bonding, love bonding, um, help. I'm in love with a narcissist, overcoming narcissist abuse, and then how to deal with gaslighting in a relationship. And those things are all centered around narcissists. The number two, when it comes to the type of narcissist, is the malignant narcissist. When you think about anything malignant, you think about um, like a cancer tumor, and that's the bad tumor, right? The benign is the good tumor, but the malignant is the, the negative tumor that you don't want to hear the doctor say. So, you know, if you hear that, you know uh, this person is not a good person. So, um, contrary to the grandiose narcissist, these individuals don't do anything that benefit you right anything that they do is going to benefit them they <laughs> they will lash out 
they will have temper tantrums and they will attempt to destroy that person in order to um, make themselves look good or to prop themselves up, right? Because it's all about them. It's, it's never about you and what you're doing. It's all about the narcissist, right? They will say stuff like, um, I will never, um, I will do whatever it takes to make sure that, you know, that I get what I want. And that means using you, then that's exactly what they would do. They would use you to get exactly what they want. Um, Brenda said back in the day, we <laughs> we called them crazy. That's so funny. That's true. Um, Lisa said that they're selfish, very selfish. And you you think like, how can a person, like people really exist like this? Like how can a person really just, you know, we're together, we're in a relationship. I mean, it even happens with parents. So it's not just in a um, romantic relationship, but it happened with parents too. Like you may have a parent that's always um, praising their child and telling their child, like whenever they win, you know, they're loving on them. And then when they don't win, they're like, ah, oh, you know, you didn't win. And I'm not giving you my love because you didn't win. You know, when you win, I give you the love, uh, you know, giving them all of that attention. So they know if they win, they're going to get the love. And if they don't, you know, the parent is not going to love them. So they grow up with that attitude. So narcissists are not born, but narcissists are made, right? It's, it comes from their environment. And it really starts when they're little as a child. And the parents don't necessarily have to be a narcissist, but the behavior and how they treat the child can um, turn the child into a narcissist because of their environment. So the third type of narcissist is the covert narcissist. And this type, this type of narcissist is they are deeply self um, absorbed with themselves, right? They feel like um, they're always the victim, right? If something is happening, they always like, why they treat me like this? Or they don't appreciate what I do and what I bring to the table, right? They feel like people don't recognize how brilliant they are. You know, I'm a great artist, but people never notice how great and how talented I am because they want you to sit there and stroke their ego and tell them all of that stuff. It's like with the narcissist, they're never giving you compliments you you're always feeding their ego right you're always telling them how good they are how nice they look and how well they done but they're never feeding you and in a relationship it should be a two-way street right it should be me me boosting your ego and being genuine about it and then you doing the same for me right but not with a narcissist. It's like it's one-sided. You're always, you know, feeding into their ego and they're not doing the same thing for you. So you have to try to get it from somewhere else, right? And I'm not saying go get it from like you're cheating in another relationship, but you have to, if you plan on staying with that person, then you have to find a way to get that from a different area because you won't get it from them. Um, Deanna Williams says, Co-parenting with a narcissist is a major consistent battle because the narcissist may get a competition. That is so true. And it's so, it's so sad because the only person who's suffering is that child. The child is suffering because it shouldn't be a competition. It should be, like you said, co-parenting, two people working together to make sure that the child is getting everything that they need. And the fourth type of narcissist is a communal narcissist. And this type of narcissist is always showing off their good deeds, right? They want the world to know, you know, everything that they're doing. They they look for um, validation in everything that they do. Um, if they're doing anything out in the community, they're going to highlight it because they want people to know, yeah, it's me. I'm, you know, I'm the good one. I'm the giving one. Look at me, look at me. And it's not that they care about the person that they're they're doing it for, right? Because they really don't care about that person because they just care that this person is making them look good. Sad. Um, Lisa said, they, I just said it. Lisa said they only care about themselves and are willing to hurt, woo, hurt others to get what they want. And this is true. And they don't care. And, and they're not going to apologize. Lisa, you are so right. And they are not going to apologize to you when they hurt your feelings. Why? Because they're going to blame you for it. Remember, they're not taking the blame for anything. They're not. They're going to blame you. And they're going to have you saying you sorry. And you're going to sit back and be looking like, what did I do? Like, how did he or she just turn that around on me when it, clearly it was their fault? So this is what the narcissists do. So I just gave you four types of narcissists. So let's talk about 
how you can identify what a narcissist look like, right? Because sometimes you can get, you can think it's a narcissist and it may not be, or you can think again, like I said, with the love bombing, you can think this is the one. And then after that, that honeymoon period is over, they're back to doing, you know, having you do everything for them. Um, Deanna Williams says um, they're not connected. Ooh, they're not connected emotionally. They don't want to be connected to you emotionally. You know why? Because when it's time for them to move on to another relationship, when it's time for them to get their new supply, then it's easier for them to leave you and go and do that, right? But if they're connected with you, if, if they fall in love with you and they care about you, then it's harder for them to discard you and move on to the new supply. So you are absolutely right. They are not connected with you emotionally. Um, Anna says, yes, so many YouTubers and social media influencers go and show off. I totally, I totally agree with you. Um, social media has become this, you know, it's a false sense of um, what reality is, right? Because behind the doors, a lot of people are not living, you know, like what they show or even, you know, what they report. Like, so you have to be careful and make sure that, um, you know, you researching this stuff and you are not trying to compete with the Joneses. That's where you get lost. Don't try to compete with the Joneses. Um, so how do you identify a narcissist? So the first um, thing would be they have an exaggerated sense of self-importance, right? And we talked about, you know, if it's not about you at all, it has nothing to do with you. And if you get them to a point, say if you have you graduated and you got your degree and you throw yourself a party to celebrate, they, they're going to be ticked off because now nobody is paying attention to them. It's not about them. It's all about you. And they don't want that. They want the focus to be directly on them. So they, they may even get mad. They may throw a fit. Again, they, like I talked about, they may throw a tantrum and then you're sitting around like, what's wrong with you? You know, I'm, why you're not, you know, glad for me. No, they don't want to be because it has nothing to do with you. It's all about them. The second way to identify a narcissist is they have a sense um, of entitlement, right? It's all about if they go somewhere, they feel like people should be nice to me. People, I shouldn't have to wait in line. You know, I should be able to move to the front of the line. Why do we have to wait this long in a restaurant? You know, these people are taking too long. Like they really feel like, you know, and again, it's come from when they were little and the parent, you know, the way the parent was raising them and, you know, and pushing them to win, win, win. You don't have to wait for that. Do this, do that. You know, so they grow up with that, that sense of entitlement. Right. So now you bringing it into your adulthood, thinking that everybody's supposed to bow down to you and they're not. Number three is they have a lack of empathy. So they are unable to put themselves in your shoes to see how you are feeling. you could say, oh, you know, my my um, dog died, you know, dog got hit by a car and they just like, what time are we going to lunch? Like they don't even care. They are not going to show you any type of feelings because that dog is going to take away from you um, giving them attention. Right. So they don't even care about the dog. Because remember, um, Deanna said they're not emotionally connected with you. So you may have loved that dog, but they could care less about that dog. So they, they're not going to they, they're not going to feel any type of feelings for you and with you. I know it sounds kind of cold, it, it, but it, they have they have this inability and willingness to recognize the needs and the feelings in other people. And that sounds like a cold hearted person. Right. Like, how could you not? How could you sleep with me? How could you be with me every day and spend time with me and and not even be connected with me in that way? And, and that's how it is for this person. It's so sad, but it is. Um, Brenda said, I had to learn the hard way. I didn't feel love. Like I said, it was just crazy. It didn't seem like a real relationship. I didn't understand what was happening. Wow, so I got out fast. Well, Brenda, it's, it's so sad because the, the narcissist thinking that, that this is a great relationship, right? 
they don't think anything is wrong, even though it's a one-sided relationship. So I can remember being in this relationship for, I was in a relationship with the guy for five years. This guy never told me he loved me, right? Never. And I would ask him and he would give an excuse like, yeah, we're not there yet. Or, you know, and I'm thinking, I'm thinking, cause you know, we're having sex and, you know, we're hanging out and, you know, I'm thinking, you know, these things are love and it wasn't, it was for him. The narcissist don't want to be by himself. Why? Because the narcissist don't like himself. So he don't want to spend no time with himself. So yeah, he'll spend, he'll spend, a, um, you think it's quality time, but it's not, it's not quality time because you're not talking, you're not connecting, you know, or, or any of those levels to make the relationship deeper because he doesn't want that connection. Why? Because he wants to be able to, if you get to the point to where you're not doing what he wants you to do and you're always combative, you're always fighting him and disagreeing with him or her, then it's easy for them to leave. It's very easy for them to leave you. Um, Deanna says, how to identify a narcissist is when meeting them, they begin the conversation with, <laughs> in my last relationship, my ex did not support me. Mm -mm -mm. And they will say that. Why didn't the ex support you? Because it was a one sided relationship and you wasn't supported. It wasn't a two way street. It was but really you wasn't supporting the ex. Um, I agree. She said it wasn't a relationship. I think she was commenting on what Brenda said. It wasn't a relationship. So you have to. The narcissist will tell you, like um, Deanna said, if you have a conversation with them in the beginning, and that's the purpose of collecting data with somebody, right? When you're dating, you're collecting that data so that you can learn that person and you can figure out if you want to move forward or not. So if you sit and listen to the narcissist, the narcissist is going to tell you exactly that they're a narcissist without saying straight out that I'm a narcissist. You just have to listen to the conversation. Number four. They believe that they're superior and they only associate with people that are equal to them, right? Because they feel like, you know, they're the smartest and they're the smartest person in their group. They feel like, you know, they they give advice. They're going to try to give you advice on everything. They don't even want you to listen to your own advice. If you say, well, I think I should do this, they're going to be like, no, no. They want you to listen to them. Everything, again, everything is about them. So whatever they say, they're going to feel like they are the superior on that subject. They're going to always have something to say on, on a subject because they feel like they're, they're the superior and they feel like everybody should listen to them. It's sad because they don't even want you to listen to yourself. So I read this quote. It says, when somebody treats you like crap, just remember it's because there's something wrong with them, not you. Normal people don't go around destroying other people's lives. So what's wrong with the narcissist that they're going around treating you that way, right? Because there's something missing in the narcissist. And a lot of times, a narcissist don't want to go and see what's wrong with them. Again, they don't want anybody else telling them what's wrong with them because they feel like they're perfect. They feel, like, they feel like they don't have any issues. They feel like, who are you to tell me? that something is wrong with me when I'm the superior, when I'm the expert, I, I'm, I give everybody advice. Ooh, that type of person, I'm serious, that type of person exists. Number five, how you can identify a narcissist is their need to be admired all the time, all the time, right? All the time. You have to make sure that they want you to go to these great lengths on telling them about how you feel about them again. They're not going to tell you. And don't you dare criticize them. Don't you dare try to correct them. Don't you dare or even disagree with them. OK, don't do it because they will silence you. Right. They will ghost you. And you'll be like, what happened? What did I do? And you'll be trying to figure out, you know, what happened. And you'll be calling them, begging them and try to figure out what happened. And they'll be like, yeah, OK, I'm gonna call you later. It'd be like nonchalant for them because now, see, it gave you control when you corrected them, the control was in your hand because now, so now in order for them to take it back control, because they always have to be in control, they try to reset it by silencing you because they know you're going to come and ask why they're not talking to you. Why are you not spending no time with me? 
they know you're going to ask them. And then this is a way for them to gain back the control in the relationship. With a narcissist, it's, all, it's always all about control. If they're not in control, you're not in a relationship right? There, there is going to be no time when you are going to be in control of the relationship. It sounds, it's sad, but it's so true. So number six, um, how you can identify a narcissist is they expect special favors, unquestioning compliance with, with people, right? So if they ask you to do something, they don't want you to question them. They want you to do it. You know, they want you to comply. They want you to be obedient. And then if you're not, again, they will punish you. And the punishment could be them disregarding you because now they want to get somebody who, who's going to obey them. And like Deanna said, you know, because they're not emotional, emotionally connected to you, they can disregard you and go get a new supply. A narcissist are quick to get a new supply because they don't have to connect to them emotionally. So they expect people to do favors for them, right? And because they are the narcissist, because they feel superior, because they feel like they're better than everybody else, and they expect for people to just cater to their needs because they are who they are. Number seven, they are envious of others and they believe that people are envious of them, right? They figure like, you know, they figure like, you know, if people don't, you know, agree with them or don't want to be around them, then they're going to say, is something wrong with that person? You know, they envious of me, they jealous of me, you know, and they will, they will tell you and have you thinking that something is wrong with the other person, you know, because they don't want you around that person because they know that that person will have you, you know, maybe coming into your right mind to know that the narcissist is the one who's causing the problems. Number eight, they um, be occupied with fantasies about success, brilliance, power, right? They want their mate to be perfect. They want their mate to be beautiful. Why? Because a narcissist um, is like a showboat. They know they want everybody to look at them. So they want to have the, can the arm candy, right? They want, when they walk into the place, they want people to be looking at them. So they're going to make sure they get the best looking mate, you know, to make sure that, you know, everybody's envying them, right? That's what they want. So they're going to be preoccupied with all that material stuff that they probably won't even get, right? Because they're so tied up with their foolishness in their mind. Ooh, Deanna done wrote a book. Hold, hold on. Um, Deanna said, narcissists are broken children who have been destroyed by the one person whom they open up their hearts to. That's so true. When they are disappointing from the relationship, then their minds shift in revenge mode. Ooh. And, and every person that comes in contact with them, they play the, the, pity, the um, putty game. And since people are looking for love and subconsciously, they encourage the current supply and the X becomes the competition. <laughs> Ooh, that was that was good. And that's so true. So with the the broken children, remember I mentioned that narcissists are made and they're not born, right? So it comes from whoever it was that they trusted, you know, um, that let them down. Now, like she said, everybody else is going to be punished. Everybody else is going to feel the wrath of this, right? And it's true about when they when they get a new supply, and they're gonna nine times out of ten, they're gonna try to make sure you see who they with. Once they discourage you, they're gonna try to make sure you see who they with. So you they want you to be in competition with that person, right? But you already know what you went through with that person. So you already know, you know, pray for her, pray for him and move on with your life. Um, Lisa said, although they act like they are better than others, I believe deep down they suffer from low self-esteem. And they do. They do. They do. And they're hurt, right? Like Deanna said, they're hurt because somebody hurt them. And they do. They are so sensitive, right? Their egos are so fragile, right? And that's why they that's why they they silence you. That's why they shut down because you know they know one little thing, anything that you could say, it, it could break them. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Wow. Um, oh, I knew you meant pity. Okay, pity. Uh Kenya said, good luck. Good luck. Oh my God. I'm telling you, if you come in contact with one of these, uh, you better pray. 
Um, we're on number nine. So how you can identify a narcissist is their need to be the center of attention. It is all about them. Let me tell you, if you go somewhere and people are paying more attention to you than they are paying to them, when you get home, you are going to get it, right? I can remember um, one time sitting in... Um, the guy was dating at his place of business and his friend was there and I was doing my schoolwork and the guy started asking me like, oh, what are you working on? Blah, blah, blah. And <clears throat> at the time, I think I was going for my master's degree. So I'm talking to the guy about me going for my master's degree. I see this look on the guy, on the guy I was dating. I see his face. Right. And so I knew what that meant. That means this is not about you. You, you know, you need to be quiet. So I had, I just kind of like hurry up and cut the conversation off because that would make me look smarter than him. Why? Because he only had a high school diploma. So he's like, don't be in here showing off that you going for your degree. You know, don't nobody want to hear that. Don't nobody care. You know, it's not about you. It's about me. So I just kind of, I would say, use the word stifle myself a lot with him because I didn't want to, I had to walk on eggshells because I didn't want to start an argument. I didn't want him to silence me. You know, I, you know, they like I like I said before, when they love bomb you and you you see how good that they can treat you, then you're always chasing after that feeling. But you're never going to get that feeling back because they only do it to I don't want to say trap you, but trap you, attract you. Right. They only do it for that time. But you're never going to have that again. The only way you would get it again is if you were to leave them and come back to them. And remember before I said, if you leave them and come back to them, it's going to be worse. You cannot leave a narcissist and come back. Don't do it. Don't do it. Because why? How dare you? How dare you leave me? How dare you leave me and have everybody thinking something's wrong with me, right? You can't You can't do that. You cannot go back. You can't go back. Um, Deanna said, those are the signs to exit immediately. And I mean immediately. With the narcissist, you have to cut it off cold turkey. You have to cut it off cold turkey. You cannot just wean this person off, right? You have to shut it down. You have to block. You have to make sure that you don't give in. You don't listen to any explanations, but you have to make up in your mind, make up in your mind first that I'm done. And then you got to leave cold turkey because if you don't, they're going to wean you back again with that love bombing. Um, Cadillac says, I personally don't deal with them. It's like they think that you are beneath them. Yeah, to them, you are. To them, you are. And if you say otherwise, please, you might have a black eye. Um, Kenya said, yes, I had a family member who dated one, and he was a complete, and she put some eyes, and a, 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 a complete donkey. Um, Lisa says, you are right, Deanna. You, I mean, you guys are preaching. I'm so serious. This is, is serious because a lot of people... When you leave a narcissist, you have to go get help yourself, right? You have to go get help because now this narcissist done broke you down all the way. And you really think that something is wrong with you. You really think, you know, what was it in me that, you know, you couldn't really comply with what this person want because what they wanted, could nobody comply? Nobody. Could nobody fulfill it? All right. Number, you know, number 10. Um, they manipulate you. <laughs> the whole sham of a relationship is manipulation, right? They do not care about you. They don't love you. They're using, again, they, they don't want to be alone with themselves. So the, yeah, they'll be with you, but they are not trying to, they're, they're not trying to get deep with you into no deep, long relationship. They're not connected with you. They're not telling you no, no dark, deep secrets, right? They're not doing any of that. All they want to do is to manipulate you and to stand with them so that you can comply and behave and do whatever it is that they want to cater to them. It's about them. Um, did I read this one? Um, all right, no. Um, Kenya says, and people tend to stay because of what, yes, because of what they do for them, but they emotionally messed up. That's true. They are. 
emotionally when you leave there. And, and you could be like, oh, yeah, but, you know, he used to pay all the bills and, you know, this and that. Yeah, but you, you frazzle. You like one little feather that falls on you and you you have a nervous breakdown. And it takes people longer to get out of those relationships because, you know, they have this saver mentality. No, you can't save this person. This person can't save themselves. This person don't want to be saved because this person don't think anything is wrong with them. Um, Lisa says it's very important to recognize the signs and save yourself. It's important to save yourself because when you leave there, trust me, you're going to be broke down because this person is out to is out for themselves and they're out to to really hurt you, you know, especially if you do something, again, if you do something and they they give you the silent treatment and then they gotta come come back, they're gonna hold that over your head. Like, yeah, they you back together and you think, oh, okay, they forgave me. No, it's in the back of their mind. And they're gonna use that against you every chance that they get. So you have to make sure Again, if you have to make sure that if you want to leave this relationship, that you leave it cold turkey. But if you decide to stay in this relationship with this narcissist, if you're married and you have kids and you just feel like, you know, I have too much invested and I don't want to leave this relationship, then I encourage you to go get help. I encourage you to make sure that you have other outlets to where you can, you know, get the things that you need because you know that you're not going to get it from that narcissist. You're not going to get it. Because they, it's because it's not about you. Um, Deanna said they are elaborate liars. Yeah, they will lie, right? And then you will say, yeah, you said that you know we were gonna do this, and then we did. And you could have recorded it, you could have wrote it down, you could have videoed the person and showed it to them, and they will deny it, and they will make it seem like it didn't happen, and then you will be looking crazy, and you'd be like, well, maybe it did. You got it on videotape, so you know it happened. You heard it and you seen it with your own eyes. And they will make you seem like you crazy when it's really them. <laughs> um, Kenya say, yes, they are. I'm serious. They'll make you seem like you're crazy. Um, Veronica say, yes, good point. I'm telling you, they will make it seem like you're crazy. So we did all 10, right? We did 10. I had 10 ways to identify a narcissist. Um, you guys, I need to recognize my sponsor really quick because um, they make it possible for me to go live every week. Um, so I'm going to recognize Paula Kelly with Allstate. And she is the, um, she owns her own agency, right? She's African-American, owns her own agency. She um, specializes in auto, home, and life insurance. She's located at 327 East Glenwood Lansing Road in Glenwood, Illinois. And she can be reached at 708-758-3300. Please tell her that Warriors Talk sent you. And we're talking about, again, how to identify a narcissist. We are live on Intellectual Radio, you guys. Thank you for tuning in. Um, Brenda said, I'm too selfish to deal with a narcissist. He wanted me to... <laughs> I'm sorry. He wanted me to open the doors for him. What? After, after our first date, I was done in a month. Are you kidding me? Oh, my goodness, Brenda. I can't. I cannot. Um, but I, I can believe it, though. I can believe it, Brenda. Um, Kallak said, I had an uncle who was like, who was like that great businessman, wife, and a second family, ooh, one on the side until he turned sick a few years ago. Man, did things change after that. And you know what, Kelly? Like it takes things like that. It's only going to be a trauma that happens in order for them to change. But according to um, statistics, according to psychology, they don't change. It takes something like that for them, for it to happen. Hey, Tracy, thank you for joining us. Um, she said Tyler Perry had a movie out about it. Um, Kelly said he had a movie out about it. What movie was that? Did I see it? I'm sure I probably have because I've seen all, this, all of his movies. So let's talk about, you guys, there are some myths as it relates to narcissism, right? And these are myths that they said we need to stop believing when it comes to the narcissist. So... You guys let me know in the comments, type fact or myth, whichever one you think it is. It says narcissists are born, not made, and um, 
that's why they cannot change. And I, I think I already covered this. So can you put it in the comments if you think that that is a fact or a myth that narcissists are born and not made? And the answer is, it's a fact. Narcissists, narcissists are not born. We already know that they are made, right? And um, earlier research, they said the theory is that it's from their environment. And it starts again as a child, as a child. Yes, Deanna, Deanna got it right. She said they are made. Um, Brenda said, I can do bad all by myself. <laughs> oh, Brenda. Oh, my God. Girl, I know that feeling because that's all I kept saying was, you know what? If, and then, you know what? They have you so frazzled to where it's draining to you. The relationship is draining because you so tired of shenanig the shenanigans and you so tired of just going out of your way, you know, for this person that's not going out of the way for you. So serious. Okay, so um, number two. Let me know in the comments if this is a fact or a myth. It says, if they do kind things for others, they can't be a narcissist. Like if they're doing nice things for others, they're, they're not a narcissist. Put it in the comments if you say that this is a fact or a myth. Um, Anna, you said myth. Was that from before or was it for this one? So let me know if that is a fact or a myth. Um, Deanna said they that's incurable. Oh no, I'm sorry, she said that's accurate. That's accurate, yep. Um, Tracy said we could all have these traits. You know, we have some of the traits, and you could all have these traits, but the narcissist takes the traits to a whole nother level. And they're not gonna admit that they have these traits. <laughs> Um, so it's a fact, you guys, it says if a person's actions are based, it's based basically on the narcissist's self-interest, right? So if they're helping you, they're only helping you because it makes them look good. And people are going to say, hey, oh, you know, that narcissist helped you. Oh, look what they did. You know, they're not helping you because, you know, they feel an empathy for you or they know you need the help. They're only doing it because they want to look good. Um, Brenda said it was a myth. Um, that's okay, Anna. You said it was before. Um, I don't know the name of the movie, Cadillac. Like, what was the name of the movie that Tyler Perry made? Um, myth, um, number three, let me know if this is a fact or a myth. Number three, um, narcissists are genuinely happy people with themselves, and that's why they belittle everyone else. So in the comments, let me know if that is a fact or a myth that narcissists are genuinely happy with themselves. And that's why they treat everybody, you know, everybody is, you know, beneath them, you know, because, you know, they're happy with themselves. <laughs> uh, Brenda said, true. So Brenda, you saying that the narcissists are genuinely happy with themselves and that's why they treat everybody. They belittle everybody else. Okay, let's see what the answer is. It says, fact, this is true. They are not, they're not, they're not, they're not happy with themselves. You know, a lot of them battle with, we said, um, self-esteem issues and they cannot recognize their own emotions. So how are they going to recognize yours? They don't care. They, they are not going to say that they have a problem. Anna said it was a myth. Um, Deanna says never happy. Oh, girl, they are never happy. Brenda said, right never happy they're never satisfied right you can never satisfy a narcissist why because they're not even satisfied with themselves all right number four let me know if this is a fact or a myth in the comments narcissists can't change is that a fact or a myth please put it in the comments and let me know narcissists can't change um, Kenya says they always find fault in something that you're doing. Kenya, when I tell you that they will preach a whole sermon on something that you did, right? They're going to give you a whole lecture and you're going to feel this big when they get through. Man, um, Kenya says straight facts. So number four, um, Kenya says straight facts for narcissists can't change. So let's see what the answer is. Facts. There's a difference between can't 
and won't change. And these terms seem to get confused and overgeneralized. So can a narcissist person, can they change? They Do they want to change or will they change? Again, a lot of them don't even want to say that they need help to go get help to even recognize that there's a change needed, right? Again, they, they don't think anything is wrong with them. They're going to think something's wrong with you. You're the problem, right? They're the perfect one. You are the problem. Okay, you're the problem. So we talked about, we, we defined what a narcissist was. I gave you four types of narcissists. I gave you 10 ways to identify a narcissist. And then we, and we just talked about four uh, myths and facts on narcissists. And then we're going to talk about how to set boundaries. Um, Deanna said they choose not to because they enjoy seeing people cry, <laughs> cry over their the control, um, cry over their control over you. You know what? That's and that's so sick that that person would feel that way. But it's true. It's so true, and it's and it's sickening too. It's so sickening. Alisa says I believe anyone can change if they truly have a desire to. You have to first admit that you need to change. You do. You have to admit it. And then they're going to have to probably be in therapy because, again, you know, this is something that they're not born with. It, so it's something, you know, they're made. So if it's not innate in you, then you should be able to change if you really have that desire. But I'm telling you, according to um, statistics, they're saying that a narcissist, it's, harder, it's hard for them to change. It's hard. Um, Deanna says, not a narcissist. They won't admit nothing. Girl, they not. Why? Because they're always right. They're always right. So it, changing is admitting that something is wrong with them. Remember, they're perfect. It's something wrong with you, not them. Um, Kallak says, um, the diary of a mad black woman. Was that a, was the man like a narcissist? Yeah, he was. Yeah, I could see that. I can see that. And he discarded her and got him a new supply. You are so you are so right. Diary of a mad black woman. You are so right. And it took it took him. Um, was this the one that was um no, was this the one that was when she left him in the tub and the water was running? Was that the diary of a mad black? Okay. Okay, I can see that. Cause that was something traumatizing that happened to him. Okay, you're right. I can see that. All right. I'm gonna have to watch that over. Um, Anna says it's hard because their ego is so big, girl. Ooh-wee. Their ego is so huge. You know how, have y'all seen this meme online to where um, it's a picture of, it's a picture of Jesus and he has the, this big teddy bear behind him. And then it's this, he has this teddy bear and it's this little girl right there. And um, she doesn't want, she doesn't want, um, she wants to keep the little teddy bear, right? She's like, but I love him. Even though he abused me, even though he talked down to me, even though he's in, he doesn't treat me right, I still want, she want that teddy bear, right? She wanted that little teddy bear, not knowing that behind Jesus was this big old teddy bear, but she wanted to hold on to this little one, right? Because she's used to him. She's used to him. She used to the way, you know, the teddy bear was treating her. Sometimes we have to learn how to let go, because you never know what may be waiting for you, but we're holding on to these little bitty, these little things, right? When they're destroying us inside. Um, Deanna said, in their minds, they are right, and they spend hours convincing others to be in agreement with their sickness. Girl, will we? They will, I'm serious, they will have a whole lecture with you to tell you how wrong you are and how right they are. All right, let's talk about these boundaries that you can set when it comes to a narcissist, whether you plan on being in a relationship with them or not. Number one, you need to take action and stand your ground. So whatever it is that you that's bothering you about this narcissist, you, you need to have a conversation with this narcissist. Not that it's gonna work, but you need to you need to take some type of action so that they know that you mean business. Now, again, they may silence you, they may ghost you, they may discard you, and they may get a new supply. But at least you will have your peace of mind, right? That you did something and you just didn't stand there and be treated, you know, like you're you're worthless. 
another boundary that you can set is you can create a fence line around you, right? So if you're planning on staying in this relationship, then you create this fence line around you and that's people, people around you that's going to hold you accountable, right? That's going to give you those things that you are not going to be able to get from that narcissist, right? That's going to keep you sane because you're going to, you're going to lose your mind dealing with this person. Um, Brenda said, block their number, block their number, block them on Facebook, tell the p people that y'all connected with, block them too, if you have to. Um, um, Deanna says, no conversations, just walk away and give them absolutely no attention. I'm telling you, that's the best way to do it. You have to do it cold turkey. If you don't, you are going to lose yourself in this relationship. Um, give give them no attention, zero, zero attention. I'm so serious. Um, Kenya says they they are primarily have you feeling like no, like nobody else wants you. No, nobody nobody gonna want you. No, why? First of all, they think they're the top, right? They're the top of the top. They will have you so fragile in your mind. You're going to be thinking that don't nobody want you. You're going to think that they're, they're the best that you can do. Number three boundary that you should set is you should think about, just remember that, that everybody that you lose is not a loss, right? Losing this person that's draining you, that's making you feel worthless, that you feel like you have to be obedient, like a servant to, and, and, and feeding their ego, but they can never return that favor to you. That, that's a game. That's a game if you walk away. It's a game. Number four, the boundary that you need to sex, uh, fix is that, um, to set is that remember that you can't fix everybody. I know women, we like to fix people. We like projects and stuff like that. You know, some people just can't be fixed. They can't. And you have to realize it and you have to, you have to have enough strength to walk away. Um, Kellogg said that's their way of control. Absolutely. It's all about control with them. Deanna says you can't lose what you never had. Deanna, you never had them. Emotionally, you don't know that you have a shell. You are so true. You have a shell. And the fifth boundary that you need to do is you need to remember, keep your power, right? Keep your power. And sometimes the way to keep your power is to walk away from that person, right? Don't allow this person to walk over you and have you thinking that you're nothing. Don't have them draining you and you walking around and you, you're going to be talking to everybody else because you can't talk to them. Because if you talk to them, they're going to look at you like you're crazy. Like, why are we having this conversation? Like, you already know how I feel. You already know why are we having this conversation? And you're going to, I'm telling you, you're going to walk away. You're going to be drained. When you leave that relationship, you're going to need help. You're going to need some help. How to identify a narcissist. I hope by now that you guys know how to identify a narcissist. And remember, a narcissist, it's nothing wrong with you just because you feel like, why do I keep attracting these people? I keep attracting narcissists, right? Again, they like people who, who are nice, who, you know, you, you have a nice personality. You easily get along with your forgiving person, right? you friendly and, and they can have a conversation with you and know if you're going to be their next supply, right? So they can have a conversation with you. It could be four women that they meet and they can say, they meet you and, and, you know, you meet them at a club and they say, Hey, you know, how you doing? And then they look at you and they say, Ooh, that eyeshadow you got on that, that makes your eyes look, you know, that's not becoming, you shouldn't wear that. And then you look at the person, you'd be like, and, you know, who are you? And you're like, I'm, I'm gone. And then the next person come and they be like, oh, that lipstick make your lips look big. Like, you shouldn't wear that lipstick. And then you like, I look good in this lipstick. You know, you like, bro, please. And you walk away. And then the third woman, he says, you know, that hairstyle that you got, that it don't do nothing for your face. Like, you know, you shouldn't wear that hairstyle. You know, it don't look good on you. And, and then you just like, oh, you know what? I really wasn't going to even wear this hairstyle. I knew this hairstyle didn't look good. I should have wore something else. Bing, he got you. Why? Because he felt that little um, low self-esteem right there, right? You When you you pick that hairstyle and you had enough courage to walk in the club with the hairstyle, own that hairstyle. So now he know that he knows how to get to you. He knows how to talk to you, what to say. And he knows that your self-esteem is low, you know, so he can use that. He could use your appearance. You put on a dress and, and you, you look sexy in a dress and he'd be like, oh, that's, you gonna wear that? 
Oh, okay. Well, yeah, it, you, I see a bulge. You look bulge. And they're not going to hold back. They're not going to hold back. And, and for your feelings, because they don't care about your feelings. They're not going to hold back on you. They're not. Um, exactly. Cadillac said they see the weakness. They do. Um, Brenda say, wow, this is good. Um, Deanna, you are going to have the last comment of the night. Deanna says re reverse psychology is the best way to destruct a, <laughs> destruct a narcissist because they'll spend countless hours to figure out why you are not responding to their behavior. Yes, conversations, emails, um, et cetera. They are back and try to regroup. Then the one thing that they know you like, they'll try to trick you with it. Girl, let me tell you. So let me tell you. That's the last comment of the night. Um, you guys, uh, I know people are so crazy. Yes, they can smell your fear. Let me tell you, I was out for a whole year. I was out for a whole year. Do you know this man called me for a whole year? And when I say he called me every day for a whole year, this man wore me down. And yes, I ended up going back. And when I tell you that I paid for it, I paid for going back. So that's why I say don't ever go back. Because they're going to make you pay for it. Because how dare you leave a narcissist? So there you have it, you guys. How to identify a narcissist. My closing sponsor, you guys, is Gloria Dotson with Mary Kay, who's catering to all of your beauty needs from head to toe. You can go to her website at marykay.com, G-D-O-T-S-O-N, for some exciting products. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for your feedback. Join me next Monday at 6 p.m. right here on Intellectual Radio. I'll leave you with these words of wisdom. Ooh, you can't force someone to respect you, but you can refuse to be disrespected. So thank you, as always, for joining me here on Warriors Talk with Lady Rochelle. And join me next Monday again at 6 p.m. right here where we are changing lives one warrior at a time. Thank you for listening to this week's edition of Warriors Talk with Lady Michelle. To find out more about Warriors Talk, follow at Warriors Talk, the number one, on all social media outlets. And Warriors Talk with Lady Michelle on YouTube. Please join us next week and every Monday evening at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time on IntellectualRadio.com for Warriors Talk with Lady Michelle, where we encourage, educate, and empower you into action.